through the city like Brennan Shaw. I'm on a mission to get it all. Right through the city like Brennan Shaw. If you ain't thick, please don't get involved. And now, Brandon Thick Boy Shaw. What is poppin' fam? 9 a.m. We'll do it live. Frick it, we'll do it live. What is poppin'? Fellers and ladies, mainly the fellers out there. We know my demo. A lot of dudes. A lot of dudes into the fight game. How you guys doing? It is Monday morning, October 16th. Halloween is coming, dude. And if it's on uh, on my TV, it's only scary Halloween stuff. I, nothing else, even for the kids. You know, have nightmares? We're watching Halloween stuff, dudes. That's what we do. Jim brought up the live feed, so you're double voices, double check. and he's fired. <laughs> and that's how we're starting the morning off. He's fired. Uh, I am fresh off the road. That's right. I flew to Sacramento and then uh, drove back because I was having uh, some work done on my TRX truck out at Overkill in Sacramento. They've turned this thing into a straight banshee. Uh, it is by no means legal here in California, so we'll see how long I can drive around without getting uh, that car impounded and arrested. That's part of the fun. That is part of the fun. That's also California. So we'll figure it out. We will figure it out. Um, but we shot all this content there with Overkill, uh, with the whole build, and this is one of many. I got... Uh, I got the creative juices flowing as far as the car game goes, so I'm excited for this. Um, that is the car. What Chin's bringing up, he's bringing up my Instagram. That's right when I got there with the exhaust, with the headers, the cat deletes. Um, this thing, the goal was over a thousand horsepower. We're we're about fifty horsepower over a thousand. So we're about ten fifty. We're at ten fifty, and uh, it is um, just a monster. It is. This doesn't do it justice. I know. Of course Instagram does. doesn't do it. That's that's my problem with Instagram and stuff. It just doesn't. Even the sound doesn't do it justice. It. If I revved it out there, it will. We're, we're gonna get complaints. It's. It, 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 it. You'll get complaints. It's. It's. Like I can't drive this when I'm doing sets at night because when I come back home, it still my... sounds really yeah like, good here. Yeah, even that it sounds you're like oh dang that's crazy. No, yeah. in person I was like I looked at my brother I'm like what are we gonna do, and he's like <laughs> it's too loud man. I was like that's exactly what I was going for. So shout out to Josh and the boys at Overkill, uh, mission accomplished. The Overkill 1000, the first one ever built from them. The Overkill 1000, but we're over a thousand, so it's a, we definitely they definitely overkilled it because they went over a thousand. Can we uh, play this one here? Yeah, you can play. So the, so what Chin's playing here, pause it. What Chin's playing here is uh, this is the first launch. So the TRX comes with a launch feature where it allows you to launch the car from zero to sixty quarter mile, and it, it, it tracks all that stuff. So uh, in the initial video, which you guys we have a whole episode of this coming out. In the initial video, they wanted me to drive Josh, the owner's TRX, who has, he has the, I think the 800 to the 850 kit. So you're still talking about 800, 850 horsepower, which is good. But then mine's that plus a, a lot more, right? So uh, he, I get in his car and he launches his and I freak out and we see it and freak out. And he's like, All right, I want you to feel it. I'm like, no, no, no. I want to wait till it's my car. That That's like... That's the surprise. I want to feel the actual power once it's my freaking truck. So this is me and him launching my truck for the first time. Um, and you'll see it goes, Whoo! and then I, I was like, oh, my God. And then I and he goes, no, 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 keep going. And then I, it takes off, man. It takes off. But it was it was a lot. It was a lot. And then the, the they have the lights on because I got a, a ADD uh bomber bumper put on the front and the back those lights are for off-roading which we're gonna do we're gonna shoot a bunch of content off-roading this bad boy it's just not a street princess but when those lights are on i think we made a mistake they think it's gonna look cool i think we made, it's so bright it, it looks it looks like in street fighter when Raul goes adukin all you see is my car when it when the camera they have a drone in front you just see this big flame going through the street 
So uh, this angle is the best because on the side, you can't see all the lights, but uh, it's a lot, man. <laughs> Go ahead and play right. it. Jim. It's so intense. I got problems, man. I'm like, whoa, and then it's on. It's just such a banshee. That is insane. It's insane. It's been so fun, man. It, it's been so fun, and the stuff I want to do uh, moving forward. Not I've, This truck isn't done, but it's definitely – damn near you know there's bigger blowers you can do there's other stuff you can do uh to get to 1200 1300 horsepower um but there's some stuff i've always wanted to do since i was a kid with lightnings with uh typhoons cyclones and uh it's gonna be fun man i can't wait i haven't been this excited about something in a hot second so uh it's fun man then jay Shaw met us up there i brought my oldest uh tiger with us and so we drove up there, or we flew up there and then drove back. And it was just a, a boy's trip, staying in the hotel, eating uh, freaking beef jerky and big gulps. It was a good time, man. Awesome. And we fly back. But, again, you get, you get near a cop, and it's just like I'm, there's, I might be going 40 on, a, on the highway just because if you go, they're going to be like, what the, f- the hell is I gotta that? I got to hear man? this, man. Oh, it's a, <laughs> sir, it's a gargoyle. Do you mind? Yeah, it's. We'll see. We'll see how long I can cruise around California. That might be the final straw when California goes to impound my truck. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna move to Texas. All right, man. You guys are pushing me away, but uh, we'll see. It was so much fun, dude. Uh, just the the whole process. I met so many dope people with all the brands. Uh, yeah, everybody. Ryan at Kibby Tech, who's right up the street. Which we're gonna shoot some stuff with him. Um, the boys at ADD, um, the Baja Designs, Toyo Tires, Method re- Wheels, um, the whole thing has just been just such a blast. So uh, I have some ideas. Now it's time for me to give back to you guys. We'll, we'll have some announcements, too, coming up with that whole show and all the automotive content. But I'm excited, man. Uh, one of the re- Let's get right into the fights. One of the reasons I drove back at 4 a.m. and woke up the entire city of Sacramento leaving with my truck was because I wanted to get back to make the uh, the uh, Misfits card, I guess. Is what I didn't even called. know it was Misfits, yeah. I didn't even realize that. Misfits, yeah, which is KSI. Tommy Fury was the main event, which no one really was talking about. But the, the co-main event was, um, you know, Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis. The others I'm not even getting into. Um, you know, th- we got to give them credit for – selling this fight the the magnitude of this fight especially at the level they're at in the fight game the the amount of hype and the amount of eyeballs the amount of traction it was something like i forget what they said what dylan dance has done and the the amount of views that this fight just on social media has uh gotten it it was it's something's crazy i want to say it was like 15 billion impressions (laughs) which is on her i mean i don't think ufc fight has ever done that but it just show, and again, the impressions is going based off the antics that Dylan Dennis did, that Logan Paul did, that you know all the people like me added to that. You know, I was a small part of it, but there's some real big heads who were chiming in with this. You got Schultz having Dylan Dennis on. So from the comedy world, the sports world, the fight world, you have everybody, all the personalities in the space. It's just as big. It, we're in a soap opera. That's all we are. We're in a soap. It's no different than WWE. Everyone has their opinions. You have your heels. You have your baby faces. But at the end of the day, everybody's just trying to get as much eyeballs, as much money, and achieve you know certain things. So more kudos to them. So all that being said, I think we have to give credit where credit's due. Where no, it's not Canelo versus Charlo. No, it's not Usman versus Hamza. It's it, tech. Technique-wise, fight-wise, experience-wise, of course, it's not that. But we have to at least acknowledge that these boys know how to sell a freaking fight. I almost said product, which clearly Prime's worth one gigillion dollars, which they know how to do that. But they know how to capitalize on their fan base, no matter what it is, whether it's Prime, whether it's Dylan Dennis, you know, whatever he's pushing, uh, KSI, whatever he's pushing. So we have to give them credit for that because they are changing the landscape of the fight game in that aspect, which I think is more good than bad. The reason why I'm careful, my I'm I'm struggling with the I'm going to be completely transparent. I'm struggling with being positive because what we got on Saturday, 
as a as a guy who fought in the UFC for quite some time, you know, at a, at a high level and been in sports for a high level, the product that you got is we got to be careful because it's not high level in any aspect. It's it's not a quality product. The production's quality. The buildup of it is quality. The smack talk is, you know, quality, depending on how you want to go. Or effective. Yeah, effective yeah. That's a better word, is effective. Um, so there's that. But I, I, as, as a hardcore fight fan, you know, I bleed UFC. I, I love one championship. And th- those are the sports at the highest level. My fear is we're going down a road where – that what you got on Saturday, and this isn't a knock on Logan or Dylan or KSI or Tommy Fury. My my worry is that's gonna outshine and overtake the legitimate fighters. Because what scares me is Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis, Tommy Fury, KSI. I don't even need to know the exact numbers. I'm sure we don't have them. But that will get more eyeballs than Hamzat versus Kamaro this weekend. Hmm. It will get more eyeballs than Volkanovski versus Makachev this weekend. That will get more eyeballs than Canelo and Charlo. That will get more eyeballs than Tyson Fury and Usyk. Well, guys who have spent a lifetime of discipline and an entire body of work to, that they're such outliers. They're so special. And then you have these guys because they have this rabid fan base from whatever it is, YouTube. Uh, one salt poppy, you know, he goes out there and he, he tries New York food and puts salt on it and then decides he wants to be a fighter, you know, which, again, I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to sh- – I don't want to badmouth them, but as a, as a diehard and a, and, a, and a guy who loves this fight game, I just have – such a fear that that is going to overtake the actual fighters because they're not fighters they're, they're just not i it's tough man it's tough for me to be cool here because what you're seeing is a very 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 low level um product when it comes to fighting and, and that includes tommy fury he, he's 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 just not. He's not a real boxer. He's not. He has eight fights. Um, the reason why he's fighting these big YouTubers is because I think a it's brilliant what he's doing because at his level, at eight and zero or whatever he is, nine and zero. I don't. Who gives a shit? <laughs> okay. Whatever it is, whatever his record is at that low level, when you're coming up through the ranks, if he's fighting another kid who's eight and zero from Cuba, another kid who's eight and zero from you know Russia, Ukraine. Those guys are dogs, man. They eat, sleep, and breathe that. And most of them are sleeping, you know, on a mattress on the floor without any Wi-Fi in a one-bedroom apartment trying to make this dream. Tommy Fears, a guy who's 8-0, who's making millions, millions and millions and millions. And, you know, he's engaged to a beautiful woman who's making millions. And they're in this penthouse, and his brother's the most famous boxer on the planet. So... If he were to, if he really wanted to be a real boxer, again, I'm not saying he should, but if he actually wanted credibility in the space, he would step away from fighting the KSIs, step away from fighting the Logan Pauls, step away from fighting the Jake Pauls, and go fight the no namer from Dominican Republic who's sleeping on dirt, who's 8 0, and probably has a career in boxing. Tommy Fury's beating the game. Tommy Fury is the MVP of this entire thing. Because for him to be 8-0 and to be making multi-millions, beating up non-boxers, you did it, dude. You did it. You're 8-0. Most people, uh, a guy who's 8-0, no matter who your brother is, nobody's going to pay, pay attention to. You're 8-0 and you're getting millions of views and millions of dollars and people are tuning in. That's unheard of. So he's done it right. I'm not saying he should go down the path of fighting, you know, some dude we can't pronounce in Russia that nobody's going to watch. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's traditionally how this goes. And he's, he's he's fighting easy guys and getting big paydays and getting a ton of eyeballs and get more famous from it, and making all the money off his Instagram. Like, he, he's killing the game. 
the issue is 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 what they're doing taken away from the actual fighters in the sport and that's what worries me because again the the build up to this insane billions of impressions and then there's no person in this space whether they're an analyst like me, whatever you want to call me, uh, s- someone who enjoys the UFC, who's been watching, you know, since the jump, or your big boxing head, there's nobody that's familiar with the fight game who's watching that, going, "Man, these guys can fight." That's not a knock on them. It's just we're used to this, and then we got this. So you're not getting any backlash from the general consumer. Now, man. Logan Paul's one too is insane. He looks jacked. Man, Dylan Dennis, this. Boy, I thought KSA, KSI won that fight. What? What? I, I stopped watching the KSI Tommy Fury fight after the third round. I went, I don't want to be part of this. <laughs> I, I'm good. I'm, I'm going to spend my Saturday afternoon doing something else. Uh, I'm good. I'm all checked out. It didn't make me feel good. Again, more kudos to them. And their fan base is going to watch and eat it up. You know, I, I and I don't know how far this can go, but again, I'm not hating on it. I think there's a lane for it. They're def- this misfits thing. There's a lane for it, and I also think it gives kids and young people hope. Because when you see when you see that salt poppy, when you see KSI, who was this nerdy, this is him saying, it, not me, this nerdy gamer who accumulated all these massive followers, and he's a damn near you know worth a hundred million dollars and now he's fighting in boxing finding a guy in tommy fury as the main event and getting millions of views when i say you can do anything you want that you can think of in the world this shows you that ksi was this nerdy introverted kid who went from that to this when you see that literally kids You can do anything you want to do. This is a good thing. This gives people a lot of hope. These guys weren't born able to run a 4-4 in the 40. They can't jump a 40-inch vertical. They didn't grow up boxing in the slums of Bronxville, New York. There's none of that. That's out the window. You don't have to come from the gutters, as Mike Tyson says, to become a fighter. You don't have to be a black belt in jiu-jitsu under Marcelo Garcia or under Henzo Gracie. You don't have to spend years and years of when your friends are, you know, going out and partying. You don't have to stay disciplined and not go party. This is, they're showing you, you, there is a path to do whatever you want to do. Now, are you going to be the best fighter in the world, the most techno fighter in the world? Can you walk the streets and pretend you're a badass? No. No, no, no. Those days are over. But you can get to a certain level and get millions of views and millions of eyeballs doing whatever the hell you want to do. Kind of it could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. The day and age of saying, and I tell my son this all the time, UFC fighters don't come up in Calabasas, California, and their dads don't drive the cars your dad drives. It doesn't happen. I can't use that anymore. Logan Paul and uh, Jake Paul came up pretty cushy, you know, not saying they didn't have their struggles, but they're not coming from the slums. They didn't have no op. Fighting used to be a thing where you have no other options. Well, these guys have all the options and they still decide to choose to fight, which kudos to them. Um, when it comes to the, you know, obviously the key takeaway of the, of that night, when it comes to, to Logan Paul and Dylan Dennis, I think one of the other things that made this tough for me to watch, you're talking to a person who's biased. I do a podcast, for God's sakes. I'm not alive on a broadcast. And I know how tough it is if your friend or a guy who you're close with is fighting not to be biased. That's not me. That's why I don't do professional commentating. The, the, I don't know who it was. Not Ariel did a great job. And Ariel did a good job bringing – and they need a guy like Ariel because he's as legit as we have in our sport as far as journalism goes. So you need a guy like that involved, and he can kind of back up, you know, proving that Dylan Dennis and arguing Dylan Dennis is a, a real fighter and stuff like that. But he, he, he does a good job of educating them because they're so far off on a lot of this. But the main commentator who anything Dylan Dennis did, and it was just so pro-Logan, 
you can be pro Logan, but you have to have an unbiased opinion when, as far as the broadcast goes, because that makes this even more of a circus. Dylan Dance would do anything like, dude, I'll tell you, good luck against Logan Ball, man. And then Ariel's like, well, I know his coaches were saying, because he worked with Alex Pierre, his coaches were saying, go in there, wear him out in the first few rounds, let him punch himself out, and then go to work. It was like the second or third round, and Ariel alluded to that. goes, I actually talked to Pierre's camp. They said the game plan was let him punch himself out and then go to work. He goes, well, good luck with that. That ain't going to work. You have no fighting experience, dude. What are you talking about? You're just so biased. Like, dude, you know you're not going to get to suck him off no matter how hard you go on here, right? You know that doesn't end like this. You know? it was. I was just like, oh. So I stopped watching the I had to turn the volume down. I was like, oh, god damn it. Get off his nuts, dude. You're not going to get a prime chain, bro. It ain't <laughs> happening. You're not that close to the boys. Back up, dude. Just be a little unbiased for me to give us more of a realistic product. And I think he's from the WWE, and obviously they do that stuff. And that's part of the problem. And then what makes it even more interesting, again, this is this is more power to Logan Paul, but he gets on there and like, so what's next for you? He calls out Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Chuck, please. <laughs> I know that was weird. <laughs> Of all things, yeah. Excuse yeah, me, yeah. sir. Check, please. I'm out. No, no, I'm, I'm done watching it. But KSI, Tommy Fury's up next. I'm good. He just called out Rey Mysterio after a boxing fight. But again, Logan's like, dude, this is my path. I can jump here. I can jump there. So again, kids, you can do whatever you want to do. Whatever. This proves to you when someone tells you, no matter what what freaking tax bracket your parents are in, no matter what situation you're in, uh, single family home, no matter what color you are. It not, when I say this proves you can do whatever you want to do, this is the living example, and this is a good thing. For Logan Paul to get in there and fight Dylan Dennis in a boxing match, advertise and have his prime there, and then call out Rey Mysterio, who's a WWE guy. You can do whatever you want to do. And this is a good thing. But I'm worried it's going to ruin the actual fighters. That's what I'm worried about. So we'll see. I think there's a lane for it. But if that lane overshines the real lane, we're, we're going to be in some trouble. We could be in some trouble here. Because look what it's doing to boxing. Yeah. Showtime's out. HBO's out. ESP, this was on ESPN, dude. ESPN Plus, DAZN. Because if you're a businessman, you think they give a flying crap about real boxing? No, no, they just want eyeballs and subscriptions. So if we go to them and go, hey, you can have Canelo versus the other Charlo or Logan Paul versus Rey Mysterio they go, <laughs> in boxing? No, oh, we don't care. Who gets, brings more eyeballs? Oh, Logan crushes him and will give me logan and canelo's like hey what the yeah, yeah i know but that we don't get as many eyeballs i know but i'm one of the best to ever do it i'm one of the best boxers of all time i know sweetie but logan paul <laughs> has a hundred million <laughs> subscribers you know yeah so somebody has to put their foot in the ground and go hold on here hold on it just can't be about youtube clicks and subscriptions we get we have to at least respect the sport that's my only thing with that. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to, to Dylan Dennis, people are like, oh, you called it. I think, I guess. You definitely <laughs> guess. I, I, it, you I called, called it, exactly. I, yeah. I, he did twice. He did two different attempts, a takedown and a choke. Yeah. Um, you know, I wish I could brag or, you, you know, <laughs> but this doesn't even mean being humble. For the rest of you that didn't call us, figure it out. <laughs> right figure it out this one was easy as pie that, now the fights at ufc 294 be a lot tougher to call and i'll try my best but when it comes to this you know youtuber influencer stuff yeah yeah oh did it end in a dq <laughs> did he call out ray mysterio okay okay oh you called it oh cool that doesn't make me feel good <laughs> 
I did. did. We all were freaking. Really? We were like, what the? F- yeah. Dude, uh, immediately we were like, "Holy shit!" You actually. I didn't even think it was a thing. That's but to my brothers, like, hey, man, and it's going crazy if you call them, like, really? Yeah, we want to make it the title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, dude, figure it out, everybody. It's just, nobody else called it? What are we doing? You guys need to look yourself in the mirror, man. What are we doing here? Um, can you take that for me? For the channel? I'll get yeah, that. okay. Fine. Yeah, please, man. I'm in the middle of it. All right, go for it. Um, go back to the Misfits card. You know, I, I just... You know, as far as like what's next for for Dylan Dennis, um, you know, most times again coming from the, a, a real fight background, most times when a guy performs like this, we're we're not gonna pay to see him fight again. So the UFC, if let's say Dil, the, Dylan Dennis is in the UFC, let's say he's a veteran, has several fights, gets to the main event or gets to a title fight, and he fought like this. You're going to be disciplined. You're going to be back on the prelims. You have to work your way back up till we can trust you. That's how the real fight world works. When it comes to this misfit stuff, and people are like, Dylan Danis is done. I don't think so. Because, again, the misfits teams going right now in their, their, in their meeting today going, who brought the most eyeballs? Who, who, who made the most impressions? Dylan Danis. Let's get him on the next card. It, 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 at the end of the day – what the misfits represent isn't high level fighting. It's the real housewives of UFC, the real housewives of boxing. It's a soap opera and we're, everyone's tuning into it and everyone gets views from it. So when you'll see legit MMA, um, outlets go Dylan dance is done after that performance. You're basing it off a UFC model. They don't play the same game. So that's no different than in the WWE. If a guy loses, going, he's done. He'll, he's, he'll never come back. No, this is, this is how it goes. So Dylan Dennis isn't done. I don't want Dylan Dennis to be done. He's good for them. He's good for them. So um, I, I would also ho- hope, obviously, you know, we haven't been in here since all this stuff popped off with, with the UFC 294 changes, uh, Logan Paul going after me as far as saying, you know, uh, there's no suing and fighting, all that stuff. I like, for the record, I like Logan Paul. I like Jake Paul. I like Dylan Dennis. I like KSI. I like Tommy Fury. But we're living in a soap opera. So when I say something and they respond, I don't take any of it personal. It's all for impressions. It's all for clicks, all for views. If we're in person, I'm cool with all of them. I don't dislike any of them, but I have a show where I have to critique or I have to comment on certain things. So, you know, when it comes to Tommy Fury, KSI, Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis, for Logan Paul, my only thing was, again, and this is me coming from a legit sports background, there's no suing and fighting. You, As I emphasized on Monday's pod, your payback, no matter how nasty it gets, you have a chance to legally beat the crap out of this guy and not go to jail, not go to prison. That's the payoff. Logan Paul did that. Logan Paul embarrassed Dylan Dennis. Job well done, mission accomplished. The lawsuit, that's done. Throw that, Logan, you've won, dude, in life several times over. Your fiance's beautiful. Your brother's crushing it. You live in Costa Rica or wherever the hell he is. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. You live in a, on an island. You basically run the island. You've won, dude. You've won. You've proven to us you can beat the crap out of Dylan Dennis. You've done it, dude. This lawsuit, d- drop it. Yeah. It's over. You did it, dude. You did it. You embarrassed Dylan Dennis. You did it, bud. That's it. That's where this thing stops. Because what we don't want to have happen is in this Misfits, again, there's a lane for this. The next time he fights Logan Paul, you're not going to get the same impressions. You're not going to get the same buildup. Because then you go, I got to be careful, man. I'm going to get sued. That's what we don't want. This Misfits thing is big because of a guy like Dylan Dennis. really is. So, um, you know, what's next for Dylan Dennis? He talks about the UFC. I doubt that ever happens. I, I just don't see it when we see his boxing. The, the, the UFC's so past those days of just a pure jiu-jitsu guy having success in the UFC. Name one. 
current, like I'm saying in today, in 2023, who can just have straight jiu-jitsu, no striking, and get it done in the UFC? The game's advanced so much, you can't do it anymore. Yeah. I mean, Ryan Hall was dope in the beginning, but he couldn't. How's he doing now? Yeah, I know, exactly. So, Chrome yeah. Gracie, how's he doing Exactly, now? yeah. You, yeah. You, you, you just can't. Mackenzie Dern, savage. Best jiu-jitsu in the female division. She had to adapt her style, and she got with at Ruka, and she's striking a lot more. Because there's no way you can become champ based off jiu-jitsu. Chrome Gracie was like, I'm just going to show jiu-jitsu works. How'd that go? And this comes from a jiu-jitsu guy. I love jiu-jitsu. If all you have is jiu-jitsu, you're never going to make it to the UFC, kids. It's not happening in 2023. If it's all you have, yeah. If that's all you have. Yeah. If all you have is world-class jiu-jitsu and very amateur striking, you're never making a mixed martial arts. That formula doesn't work anymore. So for Dylan Dennis, it, with his injuries stuff like it's gonna it's gonna be very tough for the UFC to sign on to that, mm. especially after losing Logan Paul. True, you know. So, but th there's a lane for Dylan to keep doing this stuff. You're telling me you wouldn't watch Dylan Dennis KSI? When I say you, I don't mean it. <laughs> I'm, I'm talking to the no. I, the, we're different. <laughs> we're different. But if to Dylan Dennis to build that fight up, what he did with Logan, you'd watch KSI. You know, and, and and also we have in the society we live in, we have such short term memories. If he starts going hard in the paint on KSI, who knows what angle he's gonna take? We're like, oh damn, okay, okay. Yeah, dig up some crazy stuff. Yeah, that February twenty twenty two, you know, twenty on the twenty second, Dylan Dennis, KSI. I'm like, okay, oh. all this stuff I'm talking about, yeah, something to do, <laughs> something to do. I, I will say this, man. Is hats off to KSI, Tommy Fury, Logan Paul, Dylan Dennis, because in the world we're living right now, in the war going on in Israel and Palestine, it's so heavy, it's so dark that this was an escape from that. So kudos to them. And it, it got, and it, it's not that you want to turn a blind eye to what's going on in the world, but it's uh, it's an escape for two hours of really what's going on. And it is the darkest nastiest, evilest stuff that ever happens in the world. And it was an escape from that. When I see that stuff, I don't want to, like, the, my car stuff, the, the truck stuff, is an escape from that. When when I see some of that stuff, I don't want to come on podcasts and be silly. I don't want to do stand-up. I don't want to post about my stupid fucking truck when you look at what's going on in the world. I don't want to do any of that. That stuff is an escape for a short second to really what's going on. And Dylan Dennis and Logan Paul, as nasty as that buildup was, I want to thank them. That was an escape for two hours of real problems going on. At the end of the day, Logan Paul being Dylan Dennis, in, in the grand scheme of things of what's going on in the world, none of it matters. None of it matters. But he gave us an escape for two hours. So God bless them, man. Um you got some big fights coming up this weekend. When I say big, some of the biggest ever happened. And uh, you yeah, haven't been in here since all the news broke. The, mm -hmm. This Real Housewives of um, UFC that we're living in, th this was a, a, a big weekend with, with all these fights you being announced. You're talking about a 10-day notice. And I th I'm, I'm going to tie this all into one thing. It's about to be a long rant, and I'm going to tie it all into one thing. Stylebender, Israel Adesanya, came out and said, I'm not in and out, so I'm not going to fight for a long time. And I thought that that's such a brilliant, mature choice of Israel. Mm -hmm. What's going on with, with Israel and what's going on with the UFC and what UFC was able to pull off with uh, on a 10-day notice in replacing Paulo Costa, who fell out, and putting in... Um, Kamaru Usman and with uh, Charles Oliveira falling out and putting in Alex uh, Volkanovsky. What the UFC, what the UFC was able to do on a 10 day notice to replace with Kamaru Usman, a world class, one of the best welterweights to ever do it on a 10 day notice. Alex Volkanovsky, who's the pound for pound number one guy in the world on a 10 day notice is absolutely insane. We should all be bending the knee. What Israel was able to do to be the most active champion for so long, fought so many times, the best of the best, 
to lose to Alex Pierre and then turn around on short notice on a, a short uh, camp and then knock out Alex Pierre is so insane. Yeah. Here's what's happening is we're so accustomed to Israel doing that. We're so accustomed to Dana White and the UFC pulling this off so that we get great fights. We're not giving them the respect that they deserve, and we just assume this is how it goes. This is not normal. What Israel Adesanya has done at middleweight at the highest level for so long, as many times as he's defended that title, as many times he loses, comes back, loses, comes back. For him to do this and be as active as he is, because we're so used to that, we've lost sight of really what's going on, which is absolute greatness. And we've taken that for granted. So for him to step back makes the heart grow fonder. And the shame that is going on right now is when somebody retires, whether it's Michael Jordan, whether it's LeBron James, Tom Brady, insert big athlete, um, whether, you know, whether it's Anderson Silva, when it was Brock Lesnar, you, th this is, I'm telling you guys right now, recognize greatness when it's happening live in front of your eyes. Don't wait till these guys retire. It's, you're doing yourself such a disservice. So what's going on with Israel and there's all these comments on this stuff and, you know, he'll, he'll talk about it on, you know, his Instagram, he has a YouTube channel and we've never seen a champion be, see, be so open and tear down that fourth wall and he lets you inside his world and he's this phenomenal talent. Because you have access to Israel Adesanya, who is possibly the greatest middleweight to ever walk this earth, because you have all this access to him, you're taking it for granted how special he is. And by him stepping away, you're going to realize what a special athlete, what a special human he is. That's exactly what he needs to do. And Dana's never going to get his kudos. The UFC's never going to get their kudos. For them to have two of the main event and co-main event fighters fall out on 10 days and then replace it with Kamaru Usman and Alex Volkanovsky is nothing shy of pure greatness. But you guys are used to that. So we go, oh, cool. You're driving. Oh, new fight. Cool. You don't realize how cool that is. And it's a shame. You don't realize how great Izzy is. And it's a shame. So these guys have to go through these weird transitions for you to finally recognize what, what you got all these years of pure greatness. Izzy's not a guy that doesn't, you know, he's not a guy that misses weight. He's not a guy that doesn't take on the, the number one contender. He's not a guy who, who says he's going to do things and then pulls out of the fight injured. He's not that guy. But you guys got used to that guy and you go, ah, it's just Izzy fighting. Little do you know that he is one, once in a generational talent. And you're, we've all taken it for granted. So when he goes, I'm going to take a step back, not fight for a while. I thought, oh, that's brilliant. Let people go, damn, where's Izzy, man? What, what happened to Izzy? Because before, it was just like, oh, Izzy's fighting three months? Crazy. He just fought, right? Yep. Damn, Izzy lost to Alex? He's fighting him again? Yeah. Damn, Izzy knocked Alex out? Yeah, man. That was amazing. Damn, man. Izzy on short notice fighting Sean Strickland? Yep. Yep, yep. And he, he told the UFC to do it. UFC didn't want to do it. Damn, that's crazy. Then he loses. Oh, Izzy's done. No, no, no. You guys didn't recognize the pure greatness when he was doing it, when he's in the middle of it. And you've done yourself a disservice. So him taking a step back, it was, I'm trying to do as much as I can. But after this fight, and again, 14 months, four fights. 14 months, four fights. As the most famous man in the UFC is unheard of. And you guys want to trash Izzy. You're a moron. You guys that are bad-mouthing Izzy, moron. Look at, could you look at the massive stars? And you look, when's the last time Connor fought? And I love Connor. We don't know what's going to happen. You look at these big superstars. Look at them. How active are they? Are they taking on all customers? Are they taking on all the badasses? Izzy cleaned out. Izzy was so great. You didn't realize how great he was. He lapped the competition. Fought Robert Whitaker twice. Vittori. Paulo Costa. He lapped the competition. The UFC had to sign a fighter from Glory who beat him in kickboxing and fast track him to the title shot to get y'all interested in his fights. That 
is the definition of pure greatness. And y'all are missing it. And y'all want to make fun of him. You want to badmouth him. No, no, no. Izzy gave you so much access. We've never seen a guy of his level give so much access, break down the fourth wall. You took it for advantage. You just assumed that this is how it goes. Now you're, you're going to learn. He's once in a lifetime generational talent. Nobody's like Izzy. He's not. I know he lost. I know. Look at his resume for God's sakes. There's nobody better to ever do it at 185 pounds. This guy can lose and then come back and win. The uh, the what he did against Jan Blokovic, insane dude. He came back, won his next fight. What he did against Alex Pierre, you know the mental fortitude you have to have. You're 0 and three. Yeah. And then they're like, well, it's just kickboxing. And then he knocks you out in MMA. Yeah. And then to take that fight on a few weeks later and then knock him out playing rope a dope. Y'all must have forgot. <laughs> And he's going to remind you because now he's not going to be in there for a while. And you're going to have the rest of the middleweight division. Who ain't Izzy? They're fun. They're not Izzy. So he needs to sit back, recoup. Distance makes the heart grow fonder. And then come back and prove his greatness. The same thing with what Dane and the UFC is doing. There's nobody else on 10 days notice who can fill in these massive, massive fights and you're talking about historical fights on 10 days' notice. It's insane. For Alex Volkanovski to step up and do it, for Kamaru Usman to step up and do it, you're talking about the biggest huevos to ever fight in the UFC. It's nuts, is what we're getting. You guys need to recognize that. Not just go, oh, what are the odds? What's the DraftKings odds? But just take a step back and realize what these guys are doing for you. The fans win, the UFC wins. Something you should also recognize is Whenever it's a, a fight in Abu Dhabi or in the Middle East or it's a fight in Australia, the UFC has a deal with them. They're getting so much money. They, they have I forget how many pay-per-views that they agreed to. In their agreement, they have to provide superstar fights. So if this fight was at T-Mobile Arena, this fight was at the UFC Apex, you're not getting Alex Volkanovsky versus Makachev. That's not happening. They're not going to risk that. You're not getting... Um, uh, Hamzat versus uh, Kamar Usman. Kamar Usman, they're not calling him. You're not getting that. You're getting probably top 20 guys, like 15 through 25, to step in and just get slaughtered. And they go, all right, let's just focus on the next one. But when it comes to Australia and Abu Dhabi, they have made promises to them that give them blockbuster fights, and that's why you got these fights. They have to do that. They can't just insert no-namer who gets slaughtered. They can't do. They can do that here in America, but when it's international, when it's the Middle East, when it's Australia, they have contracts. There's language in those contracts where they have to give them big time fights, and that's one of the reasons you're getting these fights. That should be noted. I can't wait for this UFC 294. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Can't wait. Really quick to piggyback on the Israel Adesanya stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember like you picked him to win against Alex. I think both times. Yep. Uh, the second time I was like, I just, I don't see how he can win because he's, he always has his number. Right. And you know, I, I told you privately, like I have a little bit of a PTSD thing, whatever that happened. I can't get over something when he freaking knocked out Alex. I was like, it gave me more like, like, dude, there's a chance to get over some yeah, oh yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it made that much of an impact on me, yep. which was in incredible. Yeah. Yep. 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 No different than what, what Connor was doing, that magical run. We've talked about it in here. You know, Connor's changed my life forever, you know, with that magical run. And then I got to deal with Showtime based off all that stuff. Like, there's certain fighters that they're once in a generational talent. Connor was one of them. Yeah. Izzy's one of them. And you love the, the, when the it build comes, up. Yeah, the build the up. Build yeah. up. And, and with Izzy, again, if you have a trained eye, if you don't have a trained eye, but if you have a trained eye, he's so special, man. So that's why I always fight for him. He, because you guys, you, you have this mythical creature walking this earth competing in the middleweight division in the UFC. Get off his nuts. I know. I'm telling you, dude. When you see that, you, you, it's hard for me to pick against him. No matter yeah. who it is. Dude. Yeah. You're like, ooh, that dude is special, man. Definitely. He's special. He's special. It's like when you see Patrick Mahomes and he does this crazy throw. You're like, oh, my God, that's filthy. Or it's Bryce Harper for the Phillies. Back-to-back -back home runs, like, my God, dude. 
This is all the pressure on him. He can pull that off. He's special. He's different. I like that. I root for those guys. We need those guys. We need you to recognize how special those guys are. That's why I went on this whole rant. Please <laughs> recognize how special what Dana White did and what Izzy did and why Izzy needs time off. You guys took him for granted, and now you're all going to learn. You, you, you missed out. So I'll you appreciate it now. The NFL season is strong, though. I'll say that right now. This is a segue. NFL season is going strong. No teams are undefeated. The Eagles, the Birds lost, all right? Uh, who else lost? Buffalo's been losing. My, the Niners lost. Shout out to Christian McCaffrey. He got injured. That's why they lost, I think. There's no undefeated teams left, so that's all good. Now anybody can win. Anybody can lose. And you can watch all the NFL season and make bank with DraftKings Sportsbook. They're hooking new customers up with an offer that's even stronger. Bet 5 bucks on any game this week. Score $200 instantly in bonus bets. And DraftKings isn't stopping there. No way. All customers can take advantage of a sweet deal. All right. Every game day this October. You got Monday Night Football tonight. You got college football popping. Don't bet on my C buffs. They're just not ready for this limelight. <laughs> we were up 29 to nothing watching in the hotel in Sacramento. I fell asleep, woke up. My brother's throwing his TV remote, uh, and they lost in overtime. So it's tough if you're a Buffs fan right now. But, hey, still doing better than last year, so be cool, man. Get in on the game day greatness. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the code SHOBSHOW, S-C-H-A-B, SHOW. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets when you bet five on the NFL. That's code Shop Show only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit CCPG. Org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino Resort, Kansas, licensee partner Golden Nugget, Lake Charles, LA, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash football terms for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms and responsible gaming resources. If you're still listening to the show, God bless you. DraftKings, promo code shop show. Oh, this one's one of my favorite. I'm happy to welcome uh, a new company. I rock them all the time. It is Sheath Underwear. You've heard other brands on the show. As far as undies go, there's none better than Sheath Underwear. It's the best underwear I've ever worn. Every time you hear my voice, see me on stage, see me on podcast, see me on show, I'm in my Sheath freaking undies. They're stretchy fabric. It's made of moisture wicking technology, and your boy sweats. Your boy sweats. It keeps everything cool, comfortable, and right in place. All right, Sheath is particularly useful for staying cool. All right, if you're working out, you're in a hot environment. It's hot as hell out here in Calabasas right now, but also keeps you warm, comfortable, dry, and cold environments. Across the board, they got you covered, and I love their dual pouch. It keeps your man parts separated. Even the big nose separates separate, separate from the balls, if you feel me. All right, Sheath uses materials like bamboo and mesh for even more cool and comfort. You guys are going to love them. They have bamboo shirts, hoodies, designed for maximum comfort. They're all about comfort. Sheath, I swear by, just go to sheathunderwear.com. That's S-H-E-A-T-H, underwear.com. Right now, use the, use the promo code SHOB, S-E-H-A-B, to receive 20% off. The best underwear your body has ever felt by far, bar none. That's sheathunderwear.com. Use that promo code today. Use the promo code SHOB for 20% off. Sheath, baby. Have you guys felt the sheaths yet? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, let's get some. Just send me another little care package. I go through them. <laughs> I, I'm hard on my undies, dude. I expect a lot on my undies. Sheath, hold As up. you should. She do you wear a size up. large or X large or what do you <laughs> large chin for my seven year old wears large? What I wear double X, double X. Yeah, holy crap! I hate when things are really tight. Yeah, I well I wear large, large. Yeah. That's me. All right, so <laughs> the biggest uh, one of the biggest news that came out kind of personal <laughs> for my waist, dude. Not kind of personal. Not the junk, the waist. Whatever, the waist. dude. But uh, <laughs> large is you know, whatever, dude. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> apparently, well, not apparently, it happened. Usada is now leaving the UFC. Uh, this is one of the biggest news in 
MMA yeah. right now. So in 2024, UFC is going to be taking on a new thing with with Interrogator for Saddam Hussein. Really? That guy, yeah, that oh guy. He's, he's going to be the head of Seems that. Seems like this sucked if you're a fighter. Yeah. This guy interrogated who saw, Saddam Hussein. Saddam? And he's also like a and then you gotta sit practitioner. down with him. <laughs> he's like super into jujitsu, so I guess he has like you know at least he does the sport. You know, he he knows some something about sport, but uh, he's gonna head the company. Listen, shout out to Luke Thomas. He's been saying this forever. Usada, the athletes and the sports that they that Usada is known for and came up using doesn't fit the the same requirements for UFC fighters. It was always a disruption. It was net. It was always trying to fit a square into, you know, a circle. It was just never a fit. There's so many issues. Jeff Nowitzki's great. He was the best thing to come out of USADA. (laughs) The golden snitch was the best thing to come out of USADA, but USADA messed up, man. People already don't like, I don't know anybody who likes USADA. I I don't know anybody, but then for them to come out and try to get in front of the story and go at Dana in the UFC. When I saw him, I went, ooh, about to get ugly for USADA. Because nobody's better at spinning the narrative and getting their message yeah. out than Dana White in the UFC. Now, USADA, you're about to learn today. Dim the rules, buddy. Get used to this. So they'll just go off into the ether and you know test other athletes. But, yeah, it's going to be a nightmare. Yeah. Now, the rumors are a lot of this conflict started with the Conor McGregor mm-hmm. debacle. Yeah. But I think UFC was just like, you know, it's so much money. We're good, dude. Get out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. I also think it's something to be said where, remember, now they're folded into one company with TKO, with WWE and UFC. So it's weird to have this strict, strict USADA testing with UFC, and then WWE's the Wild West. Let's be honest. No, I know the hardcore W. Do they test? Shut up. So the, they're doing the Wild West over here, strict over here, under the same banner. Let's just go ahead and fold these two in, all right? Now, I don't know how strict the testing is going to get. There's definitely still some testing. I don't think this is a free-for-all where guys can just take DECA and Winstraw and fight, (laughs) you know? But I do think for UFC fighters, there's no off-season. So there has to be some sort of standard in place where guys can take performance-enhancing drugs, whether it's HGH, whether it's some sort of peptides, to advance recovery because they're not NBA athletes with an off season where they can heal and recover. They're not the NFL where there's this off season. They're not NHL. They're not MLB. They're UFC fighters. There's no off season and they get their bodies get absolutely destroyed. So uh, look at, look at how long UFC fighters careers. I think it used to be a year and a half. So there's a reason why their careers are so short. So I think the, if it can aid in recovery, they're, we need to do that. And I think UFC, as they've been on the forefront of so many things, can be the first major organization that can, you know, kind of steamroll that and get guys peptides and HGH and hormones to enhance recovery. Um, but again, it's a slippery road because then guys are going to continue to use that when they're in camp. Everyone's going to take advantage of the situation. But there should be something in place where they can do that. I'm going to surprise you with something. And then a little bit, but yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Chin's all, I'm on steroids. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, I was on TRT and they took me off for like three months to see, because it's for fertility, right? They said like, just in case, you know. If you don't have kids, can Yeah, if you want to have kids, just take it off for a while. My test levels are still like, like 900 or something without TRT, which is kind of crazy. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so this is what John Jones said after this USADA announcement. He says, man, Which, I survived USADA. First, they said I was guilty of having picograms. Then well, let me they, go here. There you go. Man, I survived USADA. First, they said I was guilty of having picograms. Then they considered me innocent. Next, picograms became legal. Guess what? I'm still here, still unbeaten. The BS no contest over DC needs to be taken off my record. I've never cheated this sport. I will stand by that until the day I die. So <laughs> I have thoughts on this, obviously, right? What's your thoughts? Uh, so he popped like twice, right? He popped twice. One was Torina Ball. The other one was like some other stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I remember when I saw the the post or the press conference with Nowitzki and uh, Hunter Campbell. Yeah. They were saying like, yeah, we did trials. We did tests about um, people took, you know, we did a test where, or they knew of a test where people took clomiphene, a little bit of clomiphene. And then like years later, they still had picograms of clomiphene in there. 
But the thing <coughs> is, they still took clomiphene. Yeah. Right. Yeah, which was illegal at the time. Yeah. So I mean, it's like you so you still... can't go back in hindsight. That's it's the same argument for Reggie Bush and the NIL deals, where Reggie's like, dude, you got kids making millions of dollars off endorsements. I took a free Hummer and I lost my Heisman. And the, you'll see billboards on LA give Reggie back his Heisman. It's like, sure now, but at the time, dim the rules. At the time, that was what it was. So we can't go back in hindsight and go, yeah, but now look, okay. But at the time, that was illegal. At the time, you weren't allowed to yeah. take that stuff. We found that stuff. It's still we still got to hold you to it. I'm not saying any of it's right, but that's kind of the rules back back then, you know. Yeah, well, and plus with Luke Thomas's thing, I'm a huge fan of Luke Thomas, but his thing is he's like very specific about like it's not making the sport safer. There's no data to show that, but it's not that. It's like the fair play thing, right? Like if remember you fought Levar Johnson, who popped right after. Correct. Yeah, you fought him, beat the brakes of him. But I mean, like well, that advantage you did grappled him for a reason. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I knew he was on won. steroids. Yeah. I didn't want to get hit in the face. But like they have that. That's an advantage if you're on steroids. If you're on hundred percent, it's an advantage. So that's no doubt. that's the thing that I think about. Like, but not, Luke Thomas's argument is what's not making this, it safer. it's like it's like uh he was saying like there's no data to show that someone that's on steroids will mess you up more than someone that's not oh, there's that's no not data true. uh would be hard to find because the bisping bisping so he, the data and this i think athletes would have a different view on this because vitor belfort you could say um whatever he was clean going in well however he passed the test going in cool but if he did steroids all through camp in, in what steroids do is, again it's massive in recovery it's massive yeah where you know if you're not on steroids and you let's say you spar on monday you're pretty beat up to about friday or saturday and then hopefully by the next week you recover you're doing cold tubs cold plunges that all the craze we've been doing it for 30 years but anyway so you're doing all this stuff just to recover to get through camp and let's say you threw i don't know 50 spinning back kicks that first week and then the second week, you might have threw 20. The third week, you throw 10 because you're tired. You don't have the same explosiveness. Well, let's say through, just for bad numbers here, let's say through 100 spinning kicks that land that one that landed and knocked you know knocked out yeah. uh, knocked out Bisbing yeah. and made him blind. Took his eye. Without, yeah. Took his eye. Without steroids, he's throwing, let's say, 15 kip. With steroids, he's probably throwing 1,000. Mm-hmm. So it's so it's that repetitive. You're able to repeat, repeat, repeat at the highest level. Repeat, repeat. No diminish in return. Repeat, repeat, repeat. And then you get in there, and you're still gonna have that. That's the advantage. It's not good. And then throwing EPO. You start throwing EPOs oh, yeah, and dude. stuff in, and you're talking about cardio. When at that, the top five guys at that level, like Volkanovski, non steroids any facet. His biggest asset, and Dominic Cruz alluded to this, one of his biggest assets is his cardio. It's his biggest weapon. He does not get tired. That's exhausting for guys. Now, let's say Islam Makhachev took EPO and can matches, not only matches cardio, but maybe go even a little higher. Well, now, now, now Volkanovski's screwed. His biggest asset is taken away because this guy artificially created it when Arlovsky put in all the hard work. So that's why this stuff is a problem. Yep, hundred <laughs> percent agree. Um, so I saw this article pop up. So as soon as uh, Gordon Ryan found out about you know Usada leaving the UFC, he said it's amazing news, right? He said there's so many benefits for it, and you basically said the same thing. It's like recovery, all this stuff, right? It makes better fighters if everyone can be on it. And then, well, you want to? I don't know if you want to see all this entire thing, but. Um, the UFC regresses back to the old days. This is amazing news. The reason people watch professional sports is all, uh, almost exclusively for entertainment value. Correct. Look at the misfits. Mm -hmm. Few people who watch pro sports have any real desire to excel at those same sports. Yeah. I don't know about that. Uh, that's true. Otherwise, they wouldn't be watching. So really, they are just watching for the most entertainment. The higher the testosterone, the more physical the athletes are, less prone to injury they are. Yep. The faster they recover, the longer they can compete. And the more entertaining, the high pace they are, the better they look, the more attention they draw, the more money they make. All true? All correct. Yeah. What's the issue? In addition, people think that just because athletes are being tested by USADA or WADA, that they are natural, laughing my ass off, uh, with the amount of of money, pride, and legacies in the line. Beating drug tests has become a multi-billion dollar industry. Always has been. 
This means uh, that the athletes who have money are big part uh, part of big teams with resources needed are able to actually beat the test. Correct? True, which like, I yeah, exactly. You. The reason I didn't do steroids when I was in the UFC, I couldn't afford it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to bring you up after this. Being right. Uh, that has historically been proven time and time again. This means top tier athletes have money and resources to use PEDs, get away with it. Up and comers don't. That was your boy. This creates an uneven playing field. If there's no testing, then every athlete can use what he or she wants, and the playing field is now level. It's not level. I see what he's saying, but still not going to be level because yeah, yeah, up and comers yeah. can't afford exactly. it. Exactly. So. I saw this link under this. This is from 2015. This is your statement on uh, PEDs. Oh, uh, wow. I don't know if you remember this or No, not. I don't remember but saying I, this. I, I by see the way, some wild shit. I freaking agree, dude. This is like insane. I'd love to hear an argument for why, sh why I shouldn't do steroids. Say I'm a young kid and I ask my dad, Dad, why shouldn't I take steroids? Can I say, well, you never... Uh, you'll never be world champ. That's not true. Andrew Silva's world champ. Well, you never fight for a title. That's not true. Chael Sonnen and Ted Spada fought for a title. Will you never be the ultimate fighter coach? Nope. Chael Sonnen and Anderson Silva. Will you never be main event? No, not true. Alistair Overeem's a main event. Bigfoot Silva's a main event. God, look at me dropping facts, dude. <laughs> well, listen, you might you might get fired. No, not really. You guys pop all the time. If he's cheating, everyone else is doing it, and they're getting reward for it. There's just no reason everyone shouldn't take steroids. Someone gave me a le someone give me a legit reason why you. you you would tell a young fighter not to take them. I would love to hear a good argument. Will you get fined three thousand and you'll have to sit out six months, maybe nine? I fight every six months anyway. Boy, it's like so true, dude. <laughs> like it, facts, dude. That's a smart dude. dude. <laughs> Twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. Yeah, uh, that, I would never like want people to take steroids, but it's like it's like the cost benefit. Like, come on. Well, then imagine the. So imagine you're Dana White. Let's say you own the UFC chin. Let's say you own, let's say you own the Lakers. You hooked up with Jenny Buss and busted in her, and yeah. then you have a kid, and you're in tight with them. LeBron James makes that organization all the money in the world. If I told you LeBron could play five more years at the highest level possible, but he has to take HGH and IGF-1 and steroids, and you're going to make, I don't know, a billion dollars? Yeah. Or... We can drug test him hardcore, and he's probably just going to be a shell of himself for the next three years. What are you going to do? Yeah. If you're I the mean, UFC, you go, hey, man, Izzy can fight for the next 15 years. If you just – or Connor can come back and fight, and you make all the money. You just got to kind of turn a blind eye to what he's doing. You're not going to do it? I, again, I haven't heard a good argument why they shouldn't take steroids. D d <laughs> that fact – these guys can get concussed. That was Excuse insane. Me? Yeah. They're going to do it anyways. That was insane. Yeah, 2015 you did that, dude. That's like I'm in the game hot second, dude, <laughs> huh? That's that's crazy. I'm more proud of that than I am calling the Dylan Dennis fight right. Dude, you should be <laughs> I never would have thought Dylan was going to do a freaking choke. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, no whatever. That's why it's tough to bet on these fights, man. There, there, there were odds, though. There were odds that D Dylan was getting DQ'd. And if you guys would listen to me, oh, you would have yeah. made so much money. But um, sometimes I'm right. Most of the time I'm wrong. I'm like Drake, okay? Uh, but if you want to uh, listen to actual experts, especially when it comes to fantasy football, UFC, NFL, MLB, Texas Rangers beat uh, Houston Astros. I got my two favorite teams, Arizona and the Phillies, are playing tonight. Let's go, Phillies. Um if you want to bet on those games, listen to actual experts. That's why I partnered up with Fancy Guru. All right, they're legit experts giving you legit facts. They got the odds. They got everything going on. Listen to them. Don't listen to me or Drake, all right? Just go to FancyGuru.com. Use the code SHOP for 20% off to get all the legit insights so you make more money. These are legit experts. It's all they do, all right? Go to the FancyGuru.com. Promo code is SHOP for 20% off. I'm um, dropping facts, and in 2015, I was dropping facts, and a lot of it is thanks to the Happy Hippo, all right? Whether you see me on a pod, you see me on stage, whatever it is, your boy's on that Kratom. I swear by Kratom, and I don't trust just anybody. It's Happy Hippo. HappyHippo.com, promo code's THICK23, THICK with three Cs. You get 20% off for freaking life, and you can use that code as many times as you want. Share it with a friend, family member, cousin, your gay aunt. I don't care. That's <laughs> Happyhippo.com promo code is thick23 for 20% off for as much as you want. The K dips, 
They're taffy. They got powders. They got gummies. They got it all, and it's the only company that I trust in the wild west of Kratom. It's happyhippo.com, promo code STICK23. Let's get back to the program, Chad. I think that's it for current events. Uh, we have uh, we got Adrian Peterson coming on Fire yeah. the Kid at 1030. Now, how much of this episode is Brian just going to talk about how strong the squads <laughs> are and uh, not talk football? It's about to drive me nuts. Let me ask you real quick, though. Eight do you inches. want to do a couple questions or no? No. It's going to be tough, right? Yeah. We're tight. Okay. All yeah, right. let's just get yeah, through yeah. this. Uh, so you got your 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 big UFC 294 going down this freaking Saturday, man. I, I'm so excited for this card. It is stacked from top to bottom. The UFC came in, saved the day. All right. Uh, it says it starts at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Yeah, super early. Because it's in Dubai, right? Yeah. Um, so you have said Nurmagomedov fighting. You got uh, Warley Alves fighting. Interesting. Uh, Magomed uh, fighting Johnny Walker. Dude, that main card is so freaking tasty. Yeah. It is the best main card, I think, this year. The names are so tough to pronounce, <laughs> but we'll get through it, y'all. Said said Nigromedov is a monster. He's had a little bit of hiccups lately, but he's one of my favorite fighters to watch in the Bantamweight division. Uh, Magomed and Kalayev and Johnny Walker. Obviously, Magomed is a big favorite in this. For He does everything well. Uh, Johnny Walker is that guy where he can – spinning back kicks – Spinning elbow, Anything, a yeah. knee. So that fight's so interesting to watch. Could be a domination by Magomed, but Johnny Walker it could pull it off with a flying knee, some crazy crap like that, and could be fighting for a title if he does. I'm rooting for Johnny Walker. Would not bet on it, though. Uh, in the, the, the co-main event, Kamaru Usman, Hamzat, Islam Makhchev, and Alexander Volkanovsky in the main event. There's it. Here's the issue. So if I'm betting on this, you're going to take Hamza, you're going to take Islam. And the odds are really on your side here because when guys go up a weight class, especially fighting for a title, especially fighting a top contender, they're like 2-40, and 40, I think, in the UFC. The odds are not good. When it comes to Alexander Volkanovsky, I, I usually don't care about the odds because the, the same rant I went on about Izzy and being special, Volkanovsky's that special of a fighter as well. So... When it comes to a, a, a fighter like that, I don't care too much about the odds. When I hear 2-40, and 40, I'm like, yeah, but it's Alexander Volkanovsky. No one has bigger wavos ever in the UFC than Alexander Volkanovsky. He's the two mm. biggest Australian nuts of all time. <laughs> On 10 days' notice, to fight Islam Makhachev is insane. And this guy's always in shape. But you, 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 it's, you can't be in an eight-week fight camp shape like he was for the first fight against Islam. His biggest tool, and if you remember on the broadcast, Dominic Cruz alluded to this. His biggest asset at 155 is his cardio. I don't think Alexander's out of shape. I, I do think he'll be able to go five rounds. I don't think he'll be able to push the same way he was in that first fight, which I thought he won. Same. And I, he won, was able to pull that off in the transitions, in the striking game, the kicks, the tenacity, the takedowns because of his cardio. If that cardio, let's say his cardio is at a 10 for that first fight, let's say it's at a 9 this time, it's you're going to get a different fight. The odds are so stacked against Alexander pull this off. Who do I want to win? Who am I picking? Volkanovski. I think you beat him the first time. Mm -hmm. But if you tell me Volkanovski on 10-day notice, and even though he's a world-class athlete and his, he, and his cardio is damn good, but on 10 days it's not a 10, it's a 9, I'm picking Islam every, all day. Um, I want Alexander win. I'm hoping Alexander wins. But off 10 days and his cardio is not at that elite, elite level, which makes him basically the Lance Armstrong of the UFC, and he's able to just you know weather the storm, get takedowns, especially late in the rounds, if that's even off a, a little bit, is on wins this fight. You're getting a different fight. You're expecting the same result as the first time against Islam Alexander Volkanovsky. You're so sorely mistaken because it's a 10 day notice. He's going to have a full camp. His cardio is not going to be the same. He's going to fight different. Now, is that enough to pull off something and knock Islam out? Maybe. That's what you're hoping for. The issue is when you take a fight on 10 day notice, I don't care what fighter you are, it, the odds are against you in every facet. It's not good for, for Alexander. It's good for the fight fans, good for the UFC, good for the brand, good for Islam. Not good for Alexander Volkanovsky. That this is going to be a t t much tougher fight. Islam's coming with a different game plan. Alexander's going to have to come with a different game plan. And his cardio is not 10, even at a 9. It's going to be tough to pick him over Islam. 
But I, I, in my heart of hearts, I want Alexander to win this fight. I still think he's the best fighter on the roster. In the main event, in Kamara Usman, Hamzat, you guys know how high I am on Hamzat. Or actually, that's the co-main event. Uh, Hamzat Kamara is the co-main event. <laughs> Which it's is, backwards yeah. on this thing. Sorry. Um, for Hamzat and Kamara Usman, um, this fight probably should have happened at 70. Now it's happened at 85. No one hangs off Hamzat's hairy nuts more than me. I think he's the next <laughs> champion at middleweight, uh, at light heavyweight. He can do it all. But it is interesting, even though I'm such a fan, when you look at his run to the title, he's never fought a middleweight. He beat Kevin Holland at a catchweight. That was his last fight. He was supposed to fight Nate Diaz. He fought Kevin Holland. Now he's fighting Kamaru Usman. Kamaru Usman's not a middleweight in any facet. The winner of this fight, the winner of this fight, the winner of this fight Mm -hmm. fights for the title. He's going to be the only guy that's ever just jumped over weight classes and never beat an actual middleweight and then become a world champion. So he fought Gerald Mershot, which was, um, now remember that because of a quick turnaround. So Gerald Mershot, he beat him in 17 seconds, right? But then after that, he fights uh, uh, your boy. My Le- boy, yeah, Legion Leach. Leech. And they fought Gilbert Burns, right, at welterweight. He fought Kevin Holland. So his run to the title, he fought, he fought Gerald Mershaw on short notice. That's why it's at middleweight. But think about this. Then he fights the Leech, Gilbert Burns, Kevin Holland. Kevin Holland was a catchweight at 180. So his run, and I know he's fought middleweight previous, right? He's fought middleweight in Brave uh, CF. He fought uh, in 2020 at middleweight against John Phillips. But those aren't world-class middleweights. His run now, remember, he's at welterweight. Miss weight, fought Kevin Holland at 180. And then fights Kamar Usman, who's not a natural middleweight. But then if he wins this fight, odds are he will, he'll fight for a world title at middleweight. And then he's an actual fight middleweights, like legit world class middleweights. It's insane. It's awesome. It's all yeah, dude. dude I'm the fact a that he got fan. Gilbert Burns out of nowhere was already insane. Crazy. Yeah. And for Kamaru Usman, who again ten day notice, it's bad for Kamaru. It's bad for Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, it'd be a tough fight if Kamaru Usman had two years to plan for this. Mm-hmm. Kamaru Usman has bad knees, so I don't know how much wrestling we're gonna get out of this. So then he's going to be forced to just strike with a much more powerful striker in Hamzat. He doesn't utilize leg kicks. Um, I don't know in what aspect Kamaru can beat him. It's MMA. I said the same thing about Strickland and Izzy. Who knows? He could land something. He does have power. He doesn't have uh, Hamzat power. So I think he's going to be forced to strike with Hamzat. He's not the most technical striker in the world. He's going to get in some trouble and get KO'd. But, I, but I, I do think it should be said, don't think that Kamar Usman is a washed-up welterweight because he lost twice to Leon Edwards. I think your takeaway from that should be, God damn, Leon Edwards is that good. And he was winning the first Leon yes. Edwards. He was dominating ever, yeah. the first fight. Yeah. Got head kicked. And then the, the second fight, not a terrible outing. You know, not the best, but that's you got to remember, that's how good Leon Edwards is. Because yeah. before that, he dominated welterweight, ran to Leon Edwards, just how it goes. So don't take this as, oh, no, Kamar Usman's washed up. He's jumping up the middleweight. It's actually a pretty good spot for him to be in because Leon Edwards doing his thing against Kobe. There's not a lot going. I guess he could fight Belial Muhammad, right? And for Kamar, he's like, man, this isn't enough for me. Now, 10 days notice, he fights Hamzat. If he wins that, Dana White has guaranteed him or Hamzat get the next title fight at middleweight. So this is his fastest track to get to a championship. So, you know, odds are stacked against him. It's a nightmare of a matchup for him. But heavy lies the crown. You want to be the champ? This is what it gets. You have to you have to walk through Hamzat. Now, remember, too, even though it was a long time ago, if he were to beat Hamzat, he fights Strickland, who he already beat. So there's that narrative, too. He's already, he always has a win over Strickland. Mm. So it's all good. For the UFC, it's good business either way. But very very tough fight for him. <laughs> and th- I think this is the first time I've seen replacements. Before replacements, last minute, we'd be like, oh, that sucks. But these are 
badass replacement. These are better than the original. <laughs> Is that crazy? Kamaru Usman, I was like, what? Yeah. Paulo Costa, Paulo who? <laughs> when before, I'm a huge Paulo fan, but oh, yeah, that's crazy. Now, as a Hamzat fan, I want him to have a legit win over a top-tier middleweight. That would have been good before he fights for a title, but I'll take Kamaru Usman yeah. all day. I, I can't wait. I'm excited. Hondo. All right, kids, that's it. I got to rush over to the Fire and Kids because we have uh, Adrian Peterson coming on, and I'm going to try to prevent Callan from talking about him being black and giant. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Niagara Falls almost sold out November 3rd and 4th. One show November 3rd, one show November 4th. That's Friday, Saturday, Niagara Falls, New York. That's at the Seneca Casino out there. The bad boys are almost sold out. And then Chicago, we will add shows if we have to. We're getting close. February, I'm sorry, February, December 8th and 9th. That's a Friday and Saturday in Chicago. Two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. Get your tickets now. Those bad boys are selling out as well. We have a bunch of other dates on there, so get you some at thickboy.com. But Niagara Falls, I will see you soon, November 3rd and 4th. That's it, kids. Enjoy the fights this freaking Saturday. Take it in. It's going to be a great one. Be nice to each other. Stay safe. I have a bunch of news as far as my car and truck content and the new show we're launching with that. So stay tuned. Love you guys. Be nice. I'm out.